Welcome back to the Siri Poetry Library. I'm your host, Daniel Siri. I'm here reading a poem called Pop Quiz. I wrote it in 2014. It's about the little quizzes we take on Facebook while Facebook steals our data. What city do you belong in? Which Batman character are you? Which ice cream flavor? 80s pop song? Which breakfast club are you? We used to have to wonder who we were, but through the miracle of social media, we never have to wonder again. Did you take the Beatle quiz twice because you got stuck with Ringo? Well, the Harry Potter one because you landed on Luna Lovegood. Guilty as charged on both counts, but they never said we couldn't cheat. I'm no Wolverine, but Nightcrawler, I could do better. I can live with being Dr. Teeth and Chewbacca, thrilled on both Madonna and the song Material Girl, but who am I? I belong in Portland, Oregon, but my heart's in San Francisco. I'm chocolate chip cookie dough, though most days I feel like chubby hubby. I'm Pepsi Cola, but nothing to do with Michael's hair, I swear. I'm Bob Barker and Bob Hope, Silent Bob and Sideshow Bob, Bobby Sherman, Pee Wee Herman, Herman Munster. I'm Yankees catcher Thurman Munster. I'm Dante Hicks and Stevie Nicks and Nikki Six and Netflix. I'm post prog rock group Sticks. I'm Tom Cruise and Thomas Jane, Lady Elaine and Ridley Scott. I'm Ellen Ripley, believe it or not. I'm in the movie The Town and Charlie Brown and Doc Brown. I'm the book Watership Down. I'm Mr. Peabody and Peter Millark, and Tony Stark, Joan of Arc, and Dr. Malcolm from Jurassic Park. I'm a seven young great. My drink name is Wicked Island Escape. I love to get drunk with Severus Snape, but I'm still Luna Lovegood. I'm the Beatles, Don Cheadle, Chester Cheetah, Peter Pumpkin Eater, and Smeagol. I'm Snoopy, the Easter Beagle. I'm Def Leppard and Led Zeppelin, Led Belly, Nelly Furtado. I'm Ricky Ricardo. Ha ha ha! I'm Kieran Culkin, Sparkly Edward Cullen. I'm Tom Cullen from The Stand. I'm the song Baba O'Reilly, but you can call me Teenage Wasteland. I'm Donald Duck, John Johnson, John Anderson, John Bon Jovi, G.I. Joe, and Jewel. I'm Winnie the Pooh and Tigger, too. I'm Scarlett Johansson and Shirley Manson. I'm not Cartman, I'm Stan. Quiz says I'm Green Lantern, but in my heart, I'm Batman. I'm Roger Moore, James Bond, James Dean, Dean Martin, and Marty McFly. I'm Inigo Montoya. You killed my father. Prepare to die. I'm Simba and Stevie Wonder and Steven Spielberg. I'm Spider-Man and Scott Pilgrim, Jimmy Olsen, Mary Kate Olsen. Olsen. I'm Lilo, not Stitch. I'm Rick James, bitch. Don't take pop quizzes seriously. They're harmless fun. Who am I? I'm Jean Valjean. Two, four, six, oh, one. Thank you. Well, that one I wrote back in, uh, I would say, April of 2014. When I wrote that poem, which became very, very requested and loved at the open mic, which is not there anymore. <laughs> that one seemed to go over very well with the crowd. Uh, it was fun. You know, it was silly. And it's something that we could all relate to because we all take those little quizzes. I still take them. That's why I wrote Pop Quiz 2, Pop Quiz 3, Pop Quiz 4. And I have a lot of notes for Pop Quiz 5. And I, I'm taking way too long to write it. And it's just one of those things that I start, but I never have enough material. So when Pop Quiz 5 comes out, it's going to much, very much be the Indiana Jones and the Crystal Skull of my pop quiz poems. It's going to be the one that just got there just way too late and the whole world has moved on and, you know, it'll have its moments, but it won't be that good. Uh, the reason why I wrote this poem is that I just finished two of the saddest... I was working on two poems that were extremely sad. One is called The Expired and another one was called City of Light, which were the, the most serious beautiful poems but very sad and very much dealing about death and the afterlife um and the things that we see in the afterlife and all the perfect things that we'll see in the afterlife that we don't have on earth and it was i mean city of light was about <laughs> people that we lost especially young people that are lost that we'll see in the afterlife and that they'll be whole and beautiful and as the angels, all the children in the wars and all the children lost to um, the terrors of the world and how that they're all safe in heaven. But, I mean, this is really heavy stuff. So I says, God, I can't write these poems. I don't have it in with me. I don't have the constitution to write these two particular poems, which still remain unreleased. They have been read at open mics a couple of times, and then I stopped because I said, no, 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 they're good and they're powerful, but they can be very intense. I remember one time I read them both at an open mic at the Revolutionary Lounge, 
And then a good friend of mine, Tom Coates, got up to read next. And he got up there and he says, I just want to say that Dan Seary is a great poet. And when he gets up to read, you stop what you're doing and you listen. Don't have any conversations. Don't talk. You listen to this man when he talks. And I never forgot that. That was always something uh, great that Tom had said to me. Because, um, you know, there was a lot of people that thought, oh, he's just the guy that writes the fluff pieces or the ones about Star Wars or the haikus and things like that. They didn't think that I could do something on that level of serious. But what happened was what people don't understand is when you make something serious, you go through such an emotional turmoil inside because you're dealing with something very, very serious. Um, I remember when Steven Spielberg made Schindler's List. Every day he showed up to work and it was he was in Poland for about five months, five or six months. And every day he showed up to work and it was like, yeah, we're going to work. We're going to make a picture. And no, it was really heavy. It was it laid very heavy on him. And he used to call Robin Williams, I believe it was once a week. And Robin Williams would make him laugh. He would say he would he would talk to him on the phone and say something funny. And Spielberg would laugh. And he said that was one of the things that helped him get through this experience. So that's the power of humor. And that's why humor is very important to me. Um, Live, laugh, and love is very true. But anybody can live. And anybody can love. Not everybody can laugh. That's one of the things that has always really struck me. And that's what we need to remember to do in life is we need to laugh. We need to joke around. We need to not, you know, not in the serious moments, no, but... We have to remember to smile and keep humor in our hearts as much as love, maybe even more than love. We need to laugh and we need to joke around. So when I wrote Pop Quiz, which became my most famous poem, um, the one that everybody loved at Open Mic and everybody was never gets tired of hearing, um, it's basically my New York, New York, which you go to see Sinatra in concert and... He must have performed New York, New York so many times that he was sick of singing it. But there might be one person in that crowd that hadn't heard it. And he performed it. And they, won't be dis- they wouldn't be disappointed because he got up there and he sang that, that tune. And that's the way I looked at this poem. Well, this is a poem that I'm getting tired of reading. And, uh, you know, I feel like, oh, everybody's heard it. They don't want to hear it again. No, people like hearing it. So... It's definitely in the rotation when I, if we ever have open mics again, and I start reading at the library again, Point Borough, open mic, Crush Beneath Poetry. Once we start up again, I'm definitely going to read that poem again, and people will laugh again, and people will think it's fun again. Um, And that's really something that we have to remember to do, because I wrote this poem as a rescue, because I wrote the, I was working on the grimmest, most serious poems I've ever done up until that point. And probably still, I don't think I ever wrote anything as heavy as City of Light or uh, The Expired. The Expired was a poem I wrote about my grandfather. And this man worked so hard his whole life. Only one day, some doctor from Coney Island Hospital calls me up through a very thick accent, tells me he has expired. And... When someone that's so close to you and someone who has worked so hard and is such a powerhouse of a, you know, a great man, a monument in your life, and then one day you just get a call and someone says, expired. You know, so that was a very serious piece and that was very strong and it's like, what are we doing in life? What are we working so hard for? What are we striving for if when you die, this is what happens? So very much, I was writing that, which was very serious. And then City of Light was about the afterlife and about hope and about heaven. And is it a good piece? Yes. But writing it was very hard for me because it was very hard to deal with the afterlife. And it was very hard to deal with these things. And I said, you know what? I can't write this stuff. It's too damn serious. It's really getting to me. It's really affecting me and my thinking. So I said, let me just do something funny. Let me put these two poems on hold, which I did. I put them on hold a couple of weeks. And I says, let me just do something funny. So I wrote that poem, Pop Quiz. And it just seemed to flow right out of me. And it was, I thought it was a lot of fun. 
most of those quizzes are for real. A lot of them are made up just for um, artistic uh, license. But most of those quizzes are real. You know, I, I really am Madonna, basically. But that was why I, you know, I said, let's have something fun with this. Because I think if it's funny for me, it'll be funny for other people. So I eventually did finish the serious poems. It was a long time before I read them. But I eventually did read them during that summer of 2014 at the Revolutionary Lounge. Um, the original location, 1776 Hooper Avenue, it's now moved uh, elsewhere in Tom's River. But please, if you can get to the Revolutionary Lounge, it's in Tom's River, please go there. They have excellent food and drink. They don't have an open mic just yet at the new location, but please go there and support your local cafes because that location was very good to me. There was a falling out later out with that particular open mic. Um, but that has nothing to do with the Revolutionary Lounge. That place is great. And the new location is nice. It's an excellent place to sit and write. It's very hard now during the pandemic. You don't want to hang out there all day uh, with your mask writing. But go in there and get some food and drink. And it's a good place. But, you know, once again... Humor is a defense mechanism. Joking around, kidding around. This is how we get through the hard uh, realities of life. You know, we have to laugh. We have to remember to laugh. We have to find something funny each day. Uh, currently now at my job <clears throat> at the middle school, we're all st stressed out until this Christmas break. We were all on edge. We were all worried about Corona. We were all worried about if the kids are wearing their mask and staying six feet apart and taking all kinds of precautions. We've had many, many cases in our school. Thankfully, um, everybody's okay, but we still worry about people getting sick and the infections and all the stuff that we should never have to worry about in a school year. But uh, when I work with my friends and my coworkers, I always try and make people laugh. I always try and do something that gets people um, laughing or smiling because it's easy to just be a downer and get mad and get upset about the situation but if we're able to laugh if we're able to just keep kidding around and and that's really what matters most so that's it for the originals today everybody have a merry christmas and a happy new year and we'll see you all in 2021 or maybe even before that because it's going to be a lot of writing going on this week see you soon bye